What is up guys, gals and minions, it is me Noir Proxy, you must be so used to that intro now, you should probably like, have a jar which has like, pounds in it for every single time I do the intro, I'll be poor after that because I'll be paying out a lot of money. But still, today we're going to be talking a little bit about Shangri-La, which is the side story in Far Cry 4, now I've been playing this game to death, obviously because of the review, but I've been playing these little side stories within the game, it kind of reminds me of Blood Dragon from Far Cry 3, you know when you played as the whole, like, 80s, 90s, old school video game thing with the movie references and all that stuff from Far Cry 3. Yeah, it was really cool, really, really awesome. But in Far Cry 4, they've kind of added their own little side story within the game. Extra content from Ubisoft, what the hell is that all about? And it's in the form of this side story called Shangri-La, which is slightly connected to the main game, I guess you could say, from future developments in the story and stuff, which I will not spoil. But still, it's just really, really awesome. Oh, I just loved it to death. I, I played every single bit so far, but this has to be the main standout level. I think this is the, maybe the second level or the third level in the game, I'm not too sure, but still, this might look a little bit cheesy going all Peter Pan flying around in petals of sexiness and stuff, but it was really, really awesome, really, really cool. So you may have noticed that the character gets a bow, which is, yep, yep, Far Cry is all about the bow these days, though then again, Crisis did come out first with the whole bow thing, right, I think, so I'm not too sure. And you also get this really awesome white tiger as a pet too, which is just sexy. <laughs> I mean, so what you get to do is, you basically get to control a tiger as you're like psychic, your Robin to your Batman, and then you get this badass bow too, and the little lights on it. Actually, one thing to actually mention too is that it kind of reminds me a little bit of the darkness in the art style. Does anyone else get like a bit of a darkness vibe from it? And yes, you did just get an arrow upgrade, so now you can fire like spread arrows. Oh, it's just awesome. It's just cool. But you get all of these different tools, gadgets here at your disposal. Well, not many, but I mean, what they are is just really effective and really fun to use. So you get this bow and arrow. The little lights on the bow and arrows, I was just about to say, actually slow down time. So you're going to see me use that a little bit in this gameplay footage and stuff. And what's really awesome, look that you can actually take down multiple enemies at the same time. The dogs there explode if you're confused. No, I did not like light a fart on fire or the enemy's farts on fire or anything like that. The dogs actually have the ability to explode and so if you shoot them or their dead corpses then they will go pop and that's kind of awesome because it takes down other enemies as well. But yeah it's just oh it's just so really 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 cool and it kind of it kind of made me a little bit sad because the levels they're about 20 minutes long I'd say. Kind of like the same amount of time it takes to defeat the DLC in this game as well so you got that whole yak pre-order farm which is around 20 minutes too and it was really saddening because because I actually enjoyed this more than the main campaign of Far Cry 4. That's a lot of awe. <laughs> but don't, don't you think that's saddening? I mean, it, it just, it's just one of these things where you'd think to yourself, if I was a developer, if you, you you'd, if I was making this game, I would know that Shangri-La would be like the way better story, the way better concept than the standard Far Cry formula. And so by playing this, it kind of really made me wish that I was playing this more than the original game. And I think it's because the developers put so much love, so much passion into these little side sections too. Maybe it was one of those things where they'd finished the game and so they had to do something else, so they added these little things into it at the end anyway, you know, they got to put like, it was kind of like letting themselves like let loose in a way, you know, have have all this like massive design flair and just like go to town, go crazy. Developers love to do that kind of shizzle, but when they're following like a standard game design and I guess you have to hold back a little bit, you gotta do what's been designed for you beforehand and all that stuff. And so with this, it was, it was just different I guess, it was just different. So here like, you got to like control the tiger which is invisible now and you got to do like slow-mo headshots, stay in stealth and all that really cool stuff stuff, because in standard Far Cry stuff, you kind of, I don't know, I mean, you kind of just like force yourselves to mix things up and stuff like that, like, you'll think to yourself, okay, I'm gonna go do some, like, standard stealthing around, and then I'm gonna go do some, oh, I don't know, like, major badass, like, combat with the like, guns and explosions and stuff, but when you're playing this, it kind of gives like a, it gives like a sense of, like, when you're in the moment, you have to do it that way. So when there's, like, a stealth opportunity, you've got to do it the stealth opportunity, and you're going to look really cool when doing it. And so I, I kind of like that. I mean, even though Far Cry is about this whole free roaming, doing what you like, I like that familiarity that the Shangri-La kind of game, or, like, side game offers, and its gameplay, too. And so, I mean, Minions, what do you think to that? Comment section below. would love, love, love to know. Also, comment and tell me, what do you actually think to the look of Shangri-La? I think this is just, oh, it's just badass. It's just, it's just really pretty. I love how they kind of stick with the whole gold and the red, that is just so bouncy. And another thing as well is that the music as well in Shangri-La sections are so, so good. So it's it's slightly creepy 
at the exact same time, it's got this like weird, like religious-y kind of holy awesomeness to it. I don't know, it just kind of really fits in the mood. They just did really, really well. And what's cool too is, is that it's not like your standard character fair evil, like the character doesn't speak English. It's got this kind of whole, you know, other language. Like, I don't know, just like, I don't know. It's just, it's just awesome. It's just really, really cool. And I think I liked it because it was so out there and like so unlike anything we've played before. Like when you're playing like Far Cry, you're thinking modern guns and all that stuff. And then, I mean, the last thing I can think of that had like first person shooter, bow and arrow without like modern day weaponry was Thief? I think it was like Thief or something. And even though that game was slightly interesting and stuff, this is kind of like your standard first person shooter section kind of thing, but in a in a different kind of theme, in a different kind of place and stuff. And just how they did it was just really, really cool. And just whenever I was playing these sections, I just kept thinking to myself, I would love to play this as a as like a standalone game. It kept making you think that maybe they could have like kept it out of the main game, but then it's, it's like, that's when it becomes DLC though, and you have to pay for it. So the fact that they put it in the game is just really awesome, because it just made that package within Far Cry 4 just that much better, but it, at the same time it makes me feel like they could have, like, taken it back and just made it that much bigger, that much amped, and you know, just longer. I just wanted more! It's basically all I wanted, I just wanted more. So hopefully, I mean, if they give us, like, another Blood Dragon sequel within Far Cry 4, that'd be really awesome. But then, maybe they might do, like, a... Like an expansion to this instead, which might be kind of cool. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. What do you think? What do you think? If you played Far Cry 4, I mean, and you played the Shangri-La sections, what did you actually think to the Shangri-La section? Do you think it deserves like an expansion upon its current, you know, expansion of the ordinary original Far Cry 4 story? Oh, it was just cool. It was just really, really cool. And I just wanted to show you this as well because obviously a lot, a few people, a lot of people aren't really going to buy Far Cry 4. I know there's a lot of opinions going around about the whole. Far Cry 4 is just like Far Cry 3, blah, 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 blah. and stuff like that, and so a lot of people may just like stick with that and not realise that Shangri-La is within Far Cry 4. And it's just cool kind of just showing you what you're potentially missing out on, especially with the slow-mo. Oh, the slow-mo is just so cool. I've just got a thing for slow-mo, dude. I don't know. <laughs> I love slow-mo for some reason, especially when you've got a bow and arrow as well. One thing I was really, really hoping for was that maybe when you complete the Shangri-La sections, that maybe AJ gets the slow-mo ability from experiencing all this and stuff. I mean, that would have been badass. That would have been so, so cool. You don't, <laughs> but that would have been really, really cool. And never mind, never mind. No, no, no. It, it's fine. It's it's fine. It's fine. It's okay. It's awesome. It's awesome. I mean, do you prefer modern day kind of weaponized kind of games, you know, with like all the machine guns and stuff? Or do you like this whole bow and arrow composite bow recurve bow thing that's going on at the moment? You know, it's, it's video games have a lot of bows in them now, especially when it comes to stealth and such. So you had like Tomb Raider, you've had Far Cry, you've had, um, you've had, um, um you know, You've had Battlefield just come out too. I mean, you've got Christ. I mean, you've had all these games. A lot of modern games, especially in like last year and this year, that have bows in them. Even Bayonetta now has a bow in it too, which is kind of surprising. But still, it's it's kind of cool. I mean, I like it. I'm, I'm liking this whole, in this, especially with this one with like the whole not modernized weaponry and something. I think that's all it is. I think it's just this whole thing of like you're playing as like a tribes person, a monk more, I would say actually, a monk warrior, I think he is. And just doing these trials, doing this completely different stuff story and just and what you end up doing during these missions is like freeing these bells of enlightenment from the evil demons that have invaded Shangri-La which is really really cool and so I think because it was so out there and so edgy as well like it wasn't it was it was kind of mystical it had a little bit of a magic element too like you know how in Far Cry Fee there was kind of like a a weird I mean it was more about drugs and stuff right and so this is more this is more got a little bit more of like a a fantasy feel to it and it's just it's just cool I just really really like it I just I love the combat as well it was just a bit more you know you don't have to worry about all these different like skill trees and stuff it was just your bow you get upgrades and you keep going it was just it was you're like your your traditional first person shooter kind of thing and obviously because it was a small thing they didn't have to have too much to in so they had all like the original Far Cry concept in it and they just had little slight upgrades that you got to have especially for the Shangri-La sections and I liked it I liked it it was awesome it was awesome I was happy with it it was really really cool I would actually if they actually presented this as like a, a short standalone thing I would probably actually buy this separately if I didn't get Far Cry 4 and if they do do that I highly highly recommend that you get it it's really fun this alone is worth playing Far Cry 4 for and <laughs> Far Cry 4 4. And you know what? I don't regret saying that. I mean, you might think to yourself, wait, you'd actually pay £50 to play a one hour adventure or something like that? But that's not really the point, is it? I mean, if you think of all these other games that have been incredibly short for full price experiences, and then they've actually been really good to play and stuff, even though they've been really short. 
they're still kind of worth it because you're actually getting to see this, play this, and see what it's all about. And I mean, you can be able to get this experience anywhere else. And I think that's the thing. I mean, sometimes it is worth paying to actually see stuff like this, play through these kind of things. And so, I mean, what is your opinion of that? I mean, oh, I mean, after I played this, I was just, I was just over the moon. I, I just really, really enjoyed it. I mean, when I was playing Far Cry 4 and, you know, I hadn't completed it, I mean, I was kind of going like, I'm liking this. It, it's fun. I mean, I didn't really play much of Far Cry V as I mentioned when it first came out and so I don't know it was it was kind of like it, it was just it was just a different it was just a different experience like I always love Blood Dragon way more than Far Cry 3 so as I said I only played like the first hour or two of Far Cry and I saw my friends play it and stuff and so I knew what it was all about and stuff but then when Blood Dragon came out I just loved how that went and like it was just a completely different direction and so maybe because I knew that Far Cry 4 was gonna have that kind of samey feel to it and that this was like completely again in another direction I mean even though it again has that first person shooter mechanics and stuff. It was just a different theme, a different story, a different art style, a different look. And that's what I guess I really, really liked about it. And so maybe, no, this is just a suggestion, but maybe they could give up with the whole modernized thing and maybe just stick to the whole, you know, made up fantasy sci-fi kind of thing. I mean, I would love to play a full Blood Dragon game. That'd be badass. Or now a full Shangri-La game. Oh, I mean, I can just picture it too, like a title. Shangri-La. I'm just actually doing my hands and stuff like, like it's like a mystical thing, like a whole new world. But like that, like Shangri-La. I, I, I'd pick that up on PlayStation 4 or Xbox One or PC. I could just see, I could see this game been its own thing, its own entity as a franchise, a series. Don't you? I mean, what do you think? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the, the potential of it is just so, so awesome. And just that, knowing that probably Ubisoft are going to capitalize on it, or maybe they will. Maybe they will see something like that. Because, I mean, there is going to be a, there is a season pass, and there's going to be season pass DLC. So, maybe they'll do more. I really hope they do. I really, really hope they do. Because there's some really badass moments. There's some really cool bits. And so, if you haven't had a chance to play this, rent the game. Just rent it. I mean, don't think to yourself, oh, well, I don't want to play it. But, I mean, just, just rent it. Just, just give it to go borrow it off a friend or sink, skip through all the normal modernized rubbish that you don't like and just play this because it is just really, really cool. It's just especially how they designed in some of the tiger and the bow and the carrot and just how it's it's just something completely different. It's just something so completely, completely different. And so minions is being mean a while probably talking a little bit about Shangri-La and it's just badass. It's just cool. I mean, look at- Okay, expl ignore the tiger chopping through me and stuff. Obviously, there's a few little glitches in Far Cry 4 and stuff, but still. It's still just really, really cool. I just love how, as well with, like, Far Cry 4, it's all about this, like, dry paint thing in Karat and stuff, because that's, like, kind of all the stuff they do with their traditions and stuff. And how they just kind of put that in there so that when you defeat enemies, they kind of disappear in a puff of colored blue paint powder. It's just- Oh, it's just so, so awesome. And I hope you like it. Oh, and the slow-mo and that just, that pain when it moves and you defeat enemies. Oh, and the bell thing where you actually, the point of safe, the, actually, wait, you know, you know, the thing that you actually, the main goal you're going for in the Shangri-La sections is this giant chain down bell that has a mind of its own that you're trying to save. But then there's these weird spinning, rotating cylinders that you may have noticed me start spinning again, which is what continues you on for the next section. And I think it was just that kind of weird... What would you say? I mean, it, it kind of reminds me of like a ghost. Supernatural. It's kind of like got that supernatural feel to it. I just liked it. I just really liked the the idea of it. Of these like inanimate objects that aren't really inanimate. Like that one over there. Look, that's losing its balance. You have to like make it continuously spin like a dreidel. It's like, I don't know. I just like that. I just like this thing where they weren't really talking to you. But you were doing it because it was part of his beliefs. And he knew he had to do it. And stuff like that. It's just so weird. I mean, is it just because it's like a completely different thing? I think that's what it is. I so think that's what it is. Because it's kind of like with Tomb Raider as well. You know how like on the new Tomb Raider, well not the new Tomb Raider game coming up, but the, you know, the redone one that they did for PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 and stuff. I mean, you know how even though she was on an island and it was all about like samurai warriors that were kind of like mutant stone men and stuff. I mean, you could still do it in that kind of setting as well. And I think I kind of won that. I kind of, if they kind of, it was kind of like with the whole World War II thing, you know, when they started making like loads of World War II games. It'd be really cool if they kind of just did, like, 
you know, back to from the modern stuff now, like, you see them going into, like, a lot more futuristic sci-fi stuff, like with Call of Duty 2, so they're kind of going away from the whole now modern era, and now we're going to, like, the futuristic kind of Battlefield 2142 kind of stuff, or, you know, things with laser guns and things, but maybe if they went even further back, you know, just, like, into the past of, like, before, and it's kind of like, like, Assassin's Creed 2 with the whole revolution thing, and, you know, having the whole, you know, with, like, Altair and stuff, you know, with that kind of era, like, the 14th, 15th, 16th century, all that kind of really badass stuff, but, like, having it like this, it's just, it's just a really cool concept, and I like the idea of maybe going back and using those kind of things for advantage for story, for narrative, and it's kind of weird, too, that these sections were so, so short, but there was so much more intriguing and much more, I don't know, for thought-provoking and fun and just interesting in their story than the actual main game was and it just it just shows in a way and it makes me it makes me hopeful for the future that we might get stuff like that you know and so anyway to be mean our proxy talking about Shangri-La and Far Cry 4 and I hope you enjoy this gameplay footage because I have really enjoyed this gameplay footage I played it through myself and these are the cool bits as well these are actually what your character look like and these are actually previous seekers who went on this pilgrimage to try and save Shangri-La from the demon invaders but they've ended up getting killed and it shows them like like freeze frame from the like original death and stuff you find them you get upgrades to your health and stuff as well but you kind of it shows a little bit of story from for Kalinag I think his main actual name is and so I don't know it's just cool it's just it's just a cool concept and it's cool how they put all these little extra little things to make it feel special within the little mini bits you know, it's, it's cool it's cool it's awesome but either way I'll see you minions next time comment section below let me know what you think if you played it I would love to know your opinion oh my goodness these fire dudes are crazy as well because all you actually have to do here look you kind of just run at them and take them down you have to get your tiger friend to distract him, and then you jump in for the kill. So working together as a team with your pet tiger friend, it's just really badass. And hopefully I'll be able to show you some more footage in the future, especially in the review, because there's some really cool moments in Shangri-La, especially the first part. All the parts are just really badass. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this here now. I'm going to let you enjoy it, see the rest of the gameplay. Especially, I definitely recommend you checking out the belt and seeing what the potential final boss of Shangri-La is. It's so cool. It gives off a Shadow of the Colossus vibe, and if you like Shadow of the Colossus, you will love, you will love the idea of this boss that's actually stalking you while you're doing this. But either way, I'll see you minions next time. Ciao.
Sure. 